this is Chris Marbella with NetLease TV. I've got Matt Barris on the line with me here on NetLease TV. Matt is with Newmark Knight Frank, NetLease Capital Markets Group. And what's your position over there uh, at uh, Newmark Knight Frank? Yeah, hi, Chris. I'm Matt Barris, I'm an Executive Managing Director in our NetLease Capital Markets Group. Glad to uh, be on with you. Thanks, thanks for being on. So now your previous occupation, you were a professional golfer. Is that correct? Well, yes, I uh, I grew up in the uh, in the uh, cold, windy city of Chicago. I went up to uh, College University of Wisconsin Madison, and then after I graduated, I moved to Phoenix in okay. the desert and played uh, professional golf for a few years, and uh, it was a great experience. And what was, uh, one of your, what was one of your best games like that that sticks out in your mind where you were? And who are some of the best players you played against? Yeah, so my lowest, uh, career low is a 63. I've hit that a couple of times. Amazing. And uh, certainly, as, they, uh, as the saying goes, I tried to continue, you know, you constantly try to get out of your own way and don't think about it as much, right? And yes. uh, one at a time. But uh, what's, your know, I, what's your favorite course in California? What do you normally play? You yeah, know, I have to say Pebble definitely has it, you know, a whole okay. special place in my heart. Uh, obviously, it's a, uh, it's just, I mean, the hi history there, Pebble. yeah, Pebble Beach. Um, actually, we went there. Beautiful and, atmosphere, right? I mean, you got the cliffs, the ocean. It's great. That's right, place. yeah. Postage stamp greens. You really got to be a great ball striker to get around that golf course and, and play well. You know, uh, this, you know this course? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think this, this, is that this, Cyprus? this is Cyprus. Cyprus. Yeah, sure. There you go. That's it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. We got one here. I don't know, or, or on the other side, right here. Here's a okay. here's one right here. This one is um, is uh, Butler National, and uh, okay. I, should, I should pull this one up. I'm kind of a I'm kind of a wannabe golfer, but I do. It's so beautiful. I mean, all these courses. Oh my God, that is beautiful. That's you gotta get for that water, huh? Is there water that's there? The, that's the uh, that's the that's the eighth hole, and it's about two ten from the tips, and it's just a dynamite, dynamite hole. But that still is one of the best courses I've ever played. I grew up grew up in Butler, Butler National, very exclusive in Oak Brook, Illinois. But uh, no, obviously, you know, I I love Los Angeles Country Club, LACC. Um, obviously, uh, they play the Northern Trust. Um, out at Riviera, that's a just a, a really, really old school, great track. But uh, I've been fortunate to be able to play uh, some some great golf courses around the country. Has has golf helped you to make deals? I would imagine they, after these guys are playing with you at ICSC, they definitely respect you. Yeah, so no, like, hey, this guy's the guy to be with on the golf course to have him on our team, and uh, you know, developers, other agents, they probably love to have you in their cart, right? I've been very fortunate with that background. My dad, my dad, uh, I, I literally remember it was like yesterday. I was playing uh, summer league baseball, baseball and golf, and played a little bit of hoops growing up too. But baseball double headers in the summer, and I, I remember I was a sophomore, and and uh, it's summertime. You're playing, uh, you know, double headers. My dad played college football at a small school in Minnesota, and he's got two new knees and two new hips and a sh new shoulder now. And he goes, Matt, I think long term i think you might thank me down the road that you you stick with the golf and go at you know go after that for sure and he always said, you know you don't you don't really throw a ball to maybe a client a boss whatever when you're older and uh, you know for that i'm 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 incredibly thankful because to your point chris i mean the amount of people i've met through the game of golf and learning people's personalities and how excited how frustrated uh, who they are to the core and what makes them tick. It's, it's pretty fun. So, and also talking a lot, a lot about deals and business and stuff like that. So. It's a fun place. You know, I'm the same way. I like to be outside. I don't really like to always be in an office. So doing yeah. business on a golf course is a tremendous way to do business. I love the outdoors. Have you played Coronado? Coronado. I Coronado. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, course. For ICMG, I, I uh, sponsored a hole with Mark McDonald, First American. Okay. And that was, you know, when ICSC was in San Diego, now it's in L.A., but I think everybody kind of, you know, they missed that, having the golf tournament at San Diego before the ICSC in San Diego. But we'll I see. remember there just a few years ago, it was a great kickstart to the uh, conference, that you'd get there in the afternoon and you'd play yeah. around and 
the, the you know the the cocktail pirate parties and the and the events kind of started shortly thereafter. I I, I love it. ICSC is going to be back in San Diego, I think, next year. So that's good news. Right. So that's great. Mark and McDonald it's said that I can help him do the, that. the golf tournament, you know, but he's like, yeah, if you want to help me do it. So we'll see what happens. Okay. But anyway, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you have some final words there you wanted to say? Go ahead. No, I was just saying I yeah. So I I, mar I met my wife in Arizona. I was playing golf, so I'm 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 grateful to her now too because we are, are raising a family. We re relocated obviously I do national net lease investments, so single tenant investments around the country, but relocated to uh, Southern California in 2015. So now to be able to play year round, Chicago, oh I love That's it. Great. But uh, it was such a shortened season, so it's 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 great to be able to play year round. Not to mention obviously within. The capital that flows out of this, you know, state, and being able to kind of continue to service my clients around the country uh, with a lot of the exchange capital that moves out of the state of California. So it's nice to nice to work out a passion that you love, and then tie that into your business and do it year round. For sure. So, so Matt, let's talk about. I know that you're listing a lot of CVS deals, as you may be aware. Of Marabella Commercial Finance. We financed a lot of Walgreen CVS deals. And um, your CVS deals are unique. They have no step downs. They have no uh, rent, rental holidays. You see a lot of these CVS deals that have the step down, the rental holidays. Um, were your stores that you're currently marketing, were they, uh, like I just interviewed um, somebody, uh, Carly Iacono, Marcus Millichap, and she's doing okay. a lot of zero, zero cash flow deals. She okay. did a zero cash flow Home Depot property. Uh, are your were these originally zero cash flow, and they defeased the loans and and then went and got an extension with CVS, or were these deals where they just got an extension and now uh, somebody's reselling them? Is that is that where these deals are coming from? Yeah, so I've 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 had experience in both. We're actually selling both, uh, you know, right now on on, on okay. various, you know, given the rent holidays and the tax treatment that's associated to it, and the four four sixty seven. Um, specifically, we're working on just through um, recently extended to twenty year leases, just clean fee simple deals, um, and these are scattered around the country. Uh, the interesting thing about the CVS is, I would say, relative to the Walgreens, historically speaking, they're they're a lower rent pain, um, or they have lower rent levels. Thus, and what, you have, what do you attribute that to? Is that the, the you know the rent to sales is different than Walgreens? What do you attribute that lower rent? You know, I I think it, you know at the end of the day, they they still obviously go to try to be as competitive as they can in the various markets. CVS does not report store sales relative to Walgreens or Rite Aid, okay. but they, in general, actually going back to the rent, lower rent level, they have lower price points. So when we're talking about 1031 exchange buyers or private high net worth that are in this sub $5 million space, a lot of these deals are trading, let's call it at a three, you know, three, $4 million number. They're cash buyers. And they're a lot more comfortable with this, the 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 rent that they're paying, you know, back in let's say before we we entered the great you know recession, a lot okay. of these rents were ex, you know especially in Walgreens they were paying you know close to you know in, in some markets three three hundred fifty four hundred four hundred fifty thousand dollars in in rent. I, I've seen some in, in the five hundred thousand space in the coast, but. Um, you know, a, there's a lot more, I, I feel, is the sophistication with some of the privates now that are saying, okay, what okay. is what is the rent relative to the market and how comfortable can we get to that? But I think because store, CVS doesn't report store sales, when you can get a recently extended store and the demographics are, 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 are strong enough, that, that gets them comfortable. And then when you look at a 1031 exchange deal where it's kind of a feeding frenzy in the two, three, four million dollar space where it's really cash transactions um it, it, it bodes well for them so and, and most, of, most of your buyers on these cvs deals are cash cash buyers and yeah a lot of people, people you know instead of going into like um like a you know a franchise deal i think that's huge i mean that really gives them an option there's really not a lot of deals with that long of a lease 
with an investment grade tenant in the two to three million range. That's a huge void. How many do you have uh, supply wise? And do you think those will go pretty quick? Yeah. Or so we, and then it, it, we, you know, we have, you know, constantly we're thankful to have, you know, quite a few that we're constantly running with around the country at any given time. So uh, obviously, you know, when you have the term 10 plus years, really, I mean, these ones are close to 20, but. Okay. Um, and then obviously you have the, the the corporate signature there and an 89 you know 89 billion dollar market cap in CVS, but even Walgreens for that matter 50 billion, um, both of them around you know in, in total what the, what's that probably 19,000 stores or so you know collectively, um, Rite Aid is you know obviously uh, taken obviously a, a, a you know a, a step back obviously their credit has really been getting hit uh, pretty hard. Uh, highly levered, and obviously after you know, really they were focusing on the two uh, contracts, both within Walgreens and then with Albertsons. Obviously, the Walgreens one went through, um, so I think now you're seeing more and more transparency about which Walgreens are going to get rebranded into a Rite Aid, and so you're seeing some more of those stores come through. But then, as a result, with the Albertsons termination of that sale there was really a lot of these, let's call it um, from a prescription, the contracts were never really, you know, renewed or um, signed. So they took a big hit within their sales. So Rite Aid and thus is obviously their cap rates are really, um, uh, you're seeing a significant delta. So if a Walgreens or a CVS is trading, you know, on a 20 year basis, let's say somewhere in the mid fives, you're seeing a Rite Aid probably going at, you know, 50 to 100 basis points, you know, from that. And that's, you know, simply because of the, the comfortability around guys being a lot more comfortable with the CVS or Walgreens uh, mm -hmm. because of their scale and because of the strength of their balance sheet than a Rite Aid and understanding where that's, you know, what is the, you know, where is, uh, where is that going as their, as their credit just went, you know, took a, took a, a notch down. Rite Aid had a uh, healthcare event. I'll have to try to dig up some of those slides and put them in here earlier in the year and i believe what they said is they sold some of their distribution centers to walgreens yep and yep. you know i don't know if that was in my own opinion i don't know you know it's kind of like you're selling your soul to the devil but i love walgreens so i can't call them the devil but i think that maybe you know um maybe they needed cash i think they had some loans coming due that they, they had to they, 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 uh, in addition to those distribution <laughs> Future, right into 2003 yeah. or something you got it exactly yeah and just to add to that I mean those distribution centers and then obviously the stores within that acquisition I think it totaled about 4.3 billion and then they paid down that debt to your point and then some of these oh, okay. kind of down. so it's kind of a restructuring move I was talking yeah. to Carly earlier in the day in her interview do you think some of this um, is because of the FASB change in the uh, lease reporting on the balance sheet where um, a lot of these companies aren't meeting their debt covenants and the lenders are calling in debt and they they figure, you know what, I've got to sell some assets and pay my debt down because now the leases are on my balance sheet as debt. There's that discussion is going on all over the place, Chris. I think you know, you, you bring up a great topic. I think specifically as we zero in on like the, the Rite Aid, the, the CVS or the Walgreens, kind of the drugstore wars, if you will. I think really, if you look at Rite Aid and I think it's just really the, when they looked at two big transactions that were gonna be going on here within Walgreens and then obviously Albertsons and one of them not happening and how that affects contracts being renewed and being signed and how customers and sales drop significantly from that. And then you know the end the end landlord or the end buyer is going to this private high net worth and you know at the end of the day they're trying they're trying you know you look you look at this as a, it's a bond wrapped in real estate right so it's an alternative investment vehicle and they're they're seeing the sales obviously uh, they want to you know have a decent understanding of the real estate but assuming the real estate's fine but if you see the sales and then obviously seeing that on a decline it's a pretty quick no. Uh, okay, I see. Let me ask you this. Would you consider buyers that may need financing? Like if they came in with a million and a half and you had a CBS at three million, would that be a consideration or do you think that you'll be able to get all, all, all cash buyers and how much time you're on the list side, right? With these deals? 
Yeah, for the most part. I mean, we'll we'll help us we'll assist you know folks out on the on on okay. on the buy side as well. But for the most yeah. part, we're yeah we're listing these properties. How much time do you think you'd give a buyer for due diligence and if they needed a loan for financing contingency on a deal? Yeah, like it'd, it'd be great to hear from you too and an update on the on the Marabella financing. And I I think we absolutely would be open to you know talking to them. Obviously, we want to really make sure you know and screen them as best we can for their qualifications obviously getting proof of funds getting you know for example from you perhaps a qualification letter and understanding what their net worth is what their holdings look like you know historically speaking we've seen this you know take place somewhere between you know 30 days to perhaps 45 days you know consistently maybe in the middle of the fairway so if we could work through other due diligence items and obviously updating their getting a new or up to phase one and going through various uh, DD and, have, and having the financing obviously run parallel. We're very much open to that, but um, you know, they're, they're, obviously there continues to be a very good 1031 activity of, of buyers that have cash. So a lot of the times you are competing against them. So you need to have a very nimble or creative lender alongside that probably has comfort around the credit and how quickly they can move. But uh, we're very open to it. Uh, they, we just obviously definitely do a lot of screening up front, make sure they are extremely qualified and, uh, right. and to move forward. I don't know if you noticed, I think the stars kind of lined up right around September and that could have been, you know, engineered through Trump. So we had a great Christmas. Everybody's happy, but you had 10 year treasury, one and a half percent. You had, gas here in california which is you know substantially higher than the rest of the country three dollars and fifty cents a gallon uh i don't know if you noticed your roads i know here in la costa the roads are perfect now i mean i see road people working everywhere so the infrastructure money's pouring into that and uh you know you you have the federal funds rate come down so Probably right in September, I mean, I hooked up with, you know, five, six, seven, eight deals, and I talked to all my counterparts, and they're really, really busy. Um, I think, you know, rates have ticked up a, a little bit. Right now, I think 10-year treasuries in the 175 range. So we're, we're about 25 to 30 basis points off where we were in September. What, what do you think is going to happen next year with the whole – is there any – do you have any feeling for where this economy is going? I know that with Carly earlier in the day, we said it's pretty much a political economy with what's going on with Trump. So it's kind of like hard to look at your crystal ball and say what's going to happen. But yeah. do you have any thoughts on the economy? And are you kind of seeing the same things we are as far as deal flow in the third, third and fourth quarter? We are. Obviously, we're seeing a very, very active end of the year. I, I think just to close that, you know, comment, you know, what inning are we in? What are we thinking about the, you know, uh, how late we are in the cycle? I mean, I think we all agree we're late in the cycle. It's just how, how many more innings do we have? Or obviously, it seems as though, um, you know, give me an example about financing. You know, I think um, all I can all I can look at is the here and now. We just traded uh, closed on two Walmarts, actually. Um, in Georgia and, and um, South Carolina, and this was for a client of ours that sold two industrial buildings in LA and the South Bay, um, down kind of in, in and around El Segundo. And he had about 20 million that he was looking to place. And we purchased two Walmarts, recently extended as well, 12 years of term. And uh, we actually got 10 year IO money on that at a 330 rate. Wow. And That's that came out. Yeah. And so, I mean, they're going to have a, you know, very healthy cash on cash, double digit going in cash on cash, extremely happy for them. They're going to do very well. And um, it was a great transaction all the way around, obviously, but for them to obviously get out of um, California and be able to kind of get a little bit higher of a re more uh, attractive uh, return and significant cash for them too. When I look at that, Chris, to answer your question, I mean, what do you think about financing? I mean, 330 rate right now, 10 year IO, you know, I mean, I, but I, I, I and literally we just closed on that okay. you know last week right so that was just that's real time that's huge so, i mean we have an election year next year i think a lot of people will all say well is it gonna be a little you know are we gonna have a little softening you know are we kind of teetering there to kind of see rates kind of go up i mean uh, anybody's guess right i mean i i think we for right now everybody's you know extremely 
you know, bullish, excited, you know, but I would say also um, very much kind of in tune and, and, and cautiously optimistic, uh, optimistic maybe is the right word, just kind of continue to plot along and, um, but to be, to be smart where you're, you're kind of, you know, making, I mean, 10 year IO, right? So they're kind of committed, you know, great investment, great credit there too. So uh, they'll do well, but no, I, I think we'll, we'll end really well. I think it'll be a pretty similar in terms of volume for net lease in general, covering about 70 billion in volume. So across the, across the sector for net lease, so office, industrial, retail, uh, government, uh, medical. So, um, but definitely, and I, I think the thing about net lease too is, which I love about it, there's just constantly new capital that comes into our space. Oh yeah, I mean, when I got in this business 98, you know, you had this many buyers. The yeah. pool of buyers, we were talking about this earlier with Carly, the, um, the clarity of the market is much better with a co-star, with a loop net, with the, with the Crexy. You didn't have those back when I first got in the business in 98. So the, it's almost more like a stock market now. I would imagine it's probably gotten more liquid than it used to be. Just yep. because now you can see it on like yours. Are they on LoopNet? Are they on Crexy? Yeah, exactly. right. well, so you can see the cap rates. People can call you. It's it's more efficient market, and yep. the pricing is more rational. That's what I'm getting. At. It's more rational pricing than before, where it was just kind of irrational. Nobody knew what the pricing was. Um, I just did a uh, refi a second property OC. Uh, I did a $7 million loan, 1030. I think it was like IO three years, three and a half percent. That closed about right around the September time frame. Um, and that was with a Chipotle, Pete's Coffee, Habit Hamburger, Cava Grill. So, yeah, I mean, I was in the three and a half too. Now I would say if we did your deals, probably portfolio, you know, we're in the high threes to mid fours depending on who we'd go with. And I think CMBS would be in that range. We could offer the IO, kind of like you speak. Um, but yeah, definitely it's crazy. The rates, I think the economy was just hitting on all cylinders right around September. I think it's, it's slowed up a little bit now, a little bit, but we'll see what happens in the first quarter. Um, Chris, are you, just as a dovetail to that, cause I can kind of share, obviously we, We've kind of worked in the different, you know, an office, industrial, medical, retail. Um, obviously, we're talking about CVSs. We're talking about, but are you seeing, you know, from commercial banks? Obviously, we did a bank of it, you know, Bank of America, for example, and that was more, you know, a commercial bank transaction, for example. You know, the the Walmart's a, a forty forty five million dollar, you know, sale on that that went CMBS. Um, we've done middle market industrial deals. Um, you know, perhaps sell lease back or, or or just you know pure pure net lease long term um, lease in place on a life insurance kind of side. What obviously it seems like everyone's still active, but where are you seeing um, uh, your your most uh, time spent right now? So we deal with like four or five different type of buyers. Okay, we have our coupon clippers. They just you know they're doctors, lawyers rolling into net lease, they want long-term net lease, they want to stay with it. Um, some are conservative, some want their money, you know, it's like, when when do you want your cake, now or later? Some say now, so they'll go IO, you know, they'll go for a 30 year, 30 year amortization. The people that say, I want my cake later, they may do a fully amortizing loan, where they don't make as much cash flow, but then they don't have a balloon at the end. So we'll do like a self-liquidating, fully amortizing loan. So it really comes down to that buyer's philosophy. Do they want their cake now or later? Um, you know, a majority of the people we deal with are 1031 buyers, category one. Then you've got, you know, like I did some deals with the Rich Uncles Reed. David, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know David. I find you know David. David. Yeah. Dollar General Great Store. Deal. So now, you know, they have a different philosophy. Um, there's some of the people that go in buy existing net lease deal with short leases and they re-tenant that building at a higher rent and they'll want, you know, they'll still want like a five, seven, 10 year fix, but with no prepay. 
so that if somebody, if they want to sell it, they can sell it. If they want to ride with the cash flow, they can continue to ride with the cash flow. So there's many, there's many different buyers and objectives and borrowers. It could be a cash out. Um, you know, one guy I did a deal with, he cashed out to pay off partners. He wanted to get rid of his partners. They own the 7-Eleven car wash free and clear. He had, he put together a partnership, 30 people. He got rid of them. He paid them off with my loan. Um, there's some, I had one guy one time did a refi cash out. One of his heirs was mad and felt like he got cut out of his inheritance. So he sued my guy. My guy had to pull cash out and pay that guy off. So there's many different reasons why people are getting loans. There's no one, there's no one specific loan and there's no one specific reason of what they're doing. So that's why it's important. You know, if you go with a, naive, a young or not very experienced loan broker, they're not gonna know the questions to ask to make the right loan for what you're looking for. It's like mm -hmm. you going into Nordstrom's and you say, hey, I wanna do a round of golf and they're gonna bring you, or a golf store, they're gonna bring you a golf shoe. They're not gonna bring you like penny loafers, right? So you really gotta get to know the objective of what that net lease sponsor, principal buyer, whatever it may be, is their objective is. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely, no, I appreciate that. Or, makes you sense. know, one other subject I wanted to ask you, and I asked Carly earlier in the day, I know that there's a lot of legislation with rent control on apartments, property tax increases. Are you seeing some apartment owners saying, you know, maybe I may want to go to Ohio, maybe I may want to go to a different state, Texas, and, and I don't want to deal with deadbeat tenants. I don't want to deal with, uh, you know, uh, tenants moving out, I got to go fix the units up. I want to just sell my apartments and roll into a passive net lease deal where I have no landlord obligations, if that is the case. Of course, some of the leases are a little bit different, but do you find that anybody come to you saying, hey, I'm worried about this rent control thing in California. I'm worried about property taxes. And where is this going? I can buy a net lease deal. I don't have to deal with all that. Yes, it's in a different state, but they're going to do all the work for me. I kick back, get a check, and I don't have to worry about these other things that are occurring with apartments. Yeah, I think that, you know, as we always talk about what inning are we in with the longest, you know, you know, historically bull market, right? Is is you know, is that too, knowing that we're in California and I think the, the how long some of these landlords have owned the apartment buildings that they, you know, they currently are are in and looking to um, you know diversify or be able to go in and, and have a yield across the you know that's that, like you said a passive investment you know mailbox money a bond wrapped in real estate um, it, there's definitely more and more conversations I mean can you see data points that really you know I think it's probably too early to to tell um, but I will tell you when I started my career in Chicago and seeing the amount of capital flows into the Walgreens deal we were selling in Chicago from a California apartment seller in a 1031 exchange. I mean, that fueled a lot of our net lease uh, investments uh, really around the country, but definitely outside of, of you know, California was um, a big, uh, uh, we, were, we were very, uh, um, uh, recipient, if you will, of a lot of the California capital from apartment owners. From owners. Now, what I would say on that topic, I would transition it because of uh, apartment owners. A lot of the times are buying these net lease deals because they want to take the, they want to go from a management intensive to, look, I want to set up my family and our in our estates, our our trust to buy, you know, the uh, triple net properties, and I don't have to put any manager in place. They're just going to get rent, you know rent checks um, from these tenants. I almost feel like industrial is becoming the next apartment um, oh, capital right. flow into net lease. And the reason I say that is because there's so many of these institutions that are still under allocated in industrial that are looking to go and get more uh, scale and market share in industrial. So you're seeing folks like what I mentioned um, in in the South Bay area, in the greater you know Port Port of Long Beach, for example, that are selling these industrial buildings, whether they're leased or uh, short-term leased, 
um, in the threes and fours on a cap rate and then saying, well, I can transition this into a triple net property. I mean, that's exactly what happened with our client in um, in the South Bay in Los Angeles is he sold these two industrial buildings that he owned for 15 plus years. And then we came to him and obviously showed him a list of different deals and kind of gave him different yields with cash on cash, cash on cash, going in cap rate. And then the term that you're going to get to that within an investment grade credit. And he said, you know, this, this looks like a great, you know, I, I can increase my cash flow. My yield is obviously, a, you know, double digit cash on cash going in. Um, I've owned this industrial deal for 15 years. I think we're going to see more of that. There'll be more, uh, a bigger wave of industrial owners looking at that because of, you know, really the asset class and the sector being the darling, right? And it, apartments will always be strong, but industrial, uh, obviously we all see is, 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 is red hot. Obviously lending, you know, um, like, you, you know, I'm sure you, 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 you agree that there's still rent growth. You can still underwrite rent growth in industrial. So the financing is still fairly accretive. And so these owners are looking and saying, okay, you know, what can I transition into? So we're seeing more of that now, actually. Is there, um, that's interesting that you so the, the, the industrial is kind of the darling now. I know for like a year or a year back, it was apartments. Everybody says, you know, retail, nobody wants to touch retail. Then everybody was like, you know, the herd kind of said, yeah, let's all go apartments. I love apartments. They're great. You're diversified, but now with the Amazons, is there any net leased single tenant industrial you can go into, or is it kind of like a one off here and there, sale lease back, build the suit? Is there like Nestle or Coca Cola or Amazon or any you know tenants that want to do sale lease backs with industrial, or is it still retail that kind of dominates? You know, no, think, that opportunity for buyers. You know, we deal with it and we work in the middle market space a fair amount and kind of more secondary and in some tertiary markets where, you know, they may be doing balance sheet treatment and obviously looking to maybe buy, you know, additional um, uh, go and acquire other locations, other competitors. So there's certainly those sale leasebacks that that are going on with middle market companies. And obviously there's there's significant capital um, that is chasing that because of the yield. Um, is arguably 100 at, at some places. Obviously, you're talking about more uh, third tier markets, 200 basis points of a delta. So looking at maybe a going in seven, for example. Um, we've done a lot of we've done a lot of business in the Federal Express space on the industrial side. Obviously, there's a lot of um, you know obviously those those cap rates are, um, are very uh, you know uh, aggressive though as well. So there's a lot of trade buyers that are looking in that as well, um, and and more of your um, what I would say your uh, your funds or maybe more you know institutions that are looking for more core type returns. Um, so that's been a, a real focus of ours. We've done you know over seventy of those uh, and 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 growing. So um, that's a that's a, that's obviously a big one. Amazon is obviously growing like crazy, you know. And so that's a that's another um, you know darling of the industrial space. But you know I think when you look at um, you know what you know, the long-term trajectory as we see within um, across the country from e-commerce and where rents can, can continue to grow in industrial, you know, it, you know, uh, like I look back on this trade that we just did with our, with our group out of um, uh, El Segundo and it was, it was a non you know, public trade of a private credit, you know, and, and the institution looked at it and said, look, whether we're going to restructure that lease with them, or we're going to go in and, and go out to the market and get some uh, get a new tenant and reposition this. Very bullish about it long term. It's really interesting. That's an interesting trend. I'd love to do more industrial. I haven't done much industrial, but if you have any industrial deals, bring them to me. I'd like to cut my teeth on some industrial. Sure. So anyway, um, how can uh, buyers out there that want to see your CBS deals? Can they see them on your website? How can they access the OMs to review those? Yeah, that'd be great. I, I'd, I'd say first off, uh, you know, um, uh, my email address, obviously, Matt, M-A-T-T dot Barris, be like boy, E-R-R-E-S at N-G-K-F dot com. To start with that, obviously, readily available. Give me an email, um, a call 949-608-2066 is the office line. Um, and then obviously at, at Newmark, uh, um, on our website, uh, we have, uh, and I can follow up with you about that, Chris, our, our, uh, 
our Newmark website, and obviously we're on Crexy, we're on LoopNet, we're on CoStar, we're on all the the the, the uh, significant and large channels for um, activity and and you know technology. Awesome. So I want to thank you, Matt, for being on NetLease TV. Um, uh, again, if if you're watching this this vlog, you you always want to have your attorney, your CPA, your insurance agent review all the aspects, whether it's purchase or financing when you're doing a net lease deal, there are certain risks involved in both purchasing and financing net lease properties. Um, are you going to become a patron of net lease TV? We hope you do. And uh, the other thing is sub make sure and subscribe to net lease TV. So whenever we do these, you'll get an email update and um, tell all your friends about net lease TV. Are you going to be at like ICSC or any events coming up where people can Absolutely. meet? Absolutely. I, I attend quite a few and I will be at New York at ICSC. Okay, so awesome. we'd love to say hello. And no, thanks for the time as well. And What's your cell it? phone if, they're, if somebody's on the plane or something and they want to hit you up at ICSC? Will you have your cell phone? Can they text you? Can they call you? Yeah. yeah. Um, cell phone 949-244-6644. And absolutely. Anybody... Uh, please reach out. Happy to be a resource inside of the NetLease space um, across the country, and uh, really enjoyed getting getting to know you, Chris. And you know, and so, so before you leave, Matt, you need to you need to give us. I love NetLease TV. Can you do that for me? <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three, go. I love NetLease TV. Awesome. All right, buddy. Well, thank you for the interview. This is Chris Marabella, NetLease TV. If you want to check out financing info, go to our website, www.marabellafinance.com. And you can always call me, 760-803-6464. Happy holidays, Matt. Happy holidays to everybody out there. I hope you have a safe and happy uh, Thanksgiving and holiday season with your relatives and your family. And thank you so much for being on NetLease TV, Matt. Thanks again. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye.